in this particular session we will continue with our next scenario from the diva beta application so let's get started so i'm using my kali linux and i'm using the jdx here on my kali linux to decompile the application and on the right hand side i'm using my android emulator and let's go with the next slide that was your insecure data storage part 2 so let's go with the scenario here again we have the same objective we need to figure out where our input part or where the sensitive data was stored inside the application so to figure out just go with your source code just go with your manifest file first and from the manifest file you have to figure out the activity name so the activity name here was insecure data storage to activity and the main java code or the main source code for this activity was located here under your jacker asim diva and your insecure data storage to activity here so let's go with the source code jacker asim diva and go with the insecure data storage to activity if you go with the source code we have simply defined an object here for this sqlite database class and the object name was mdb this was the object that we have created in this particular class to handle our sqli databases under your own create method we have simply defined a try block here we have simply defined a try and a catch block here to deal with the exception or to deal with the errors and with this particular inside this try block we have defined and database name and the database name was ids2 which will be used for this particular object mdb it means whenever we call this mdb object it will again link itself with the ids2 database here we have a basic sql query to be executed and the query was create table if not exist the table will be created with two different columns first one your was your user and second one was your password so we have two columns inside this table and the table name was my user after this on create method we got the save credential method here which will be executed from your view element here inside this save credentials method we simply execute another statement which simply insert some values inside your my user table here and the values will be collected from these fields which was your edit text for the username let's say if i simply enter username as ram hyphen sham this particular ram hyphen sham will be collected here and it will be entered into the table same thing happens with your second input field edit text here as well it means both the values will be collected and stored inside your my users table so let's save the username and password first to see if we can access those usernames and password or not so go with the username we have done so i'll go with the password as one two three four five and six and now let's go with the save credentials have been saved successfully and now let's see the saved data or to access the database just go with your terminal first of all connect your android device so for the connection part go with adb connect go with the ip address 192.168.64.102 don't forget the port number it's 5555 device was connected just go with adb shell and just follow the path where the data for this particular diva beta application was stored so just go with cd data again data and then go with your package name as jacker assume diva if you just go with ls hyphen al here you can see we got a folder with the name databases so what you can do you can simply pull the folders out in your kali linux machine so you can analyze them in a much better gui so i'll simply go with the exit and then basically use adb pull command and go with the path that we have here copy the path paste it here and with your database folder i'll store this folder inside the same home directory here so just hit enter we got the folder now just go with simple cd databases and inside databases you can see we got these four different databases and for this particular activity we know the database name was ids2 and to see the content go with sqlite browser and then go with your database name as ids2 and hit enter it will automatically open this database inside this database browser now inside the database we know 
we got a table name here as well and the table name was my user this was the table name so just go with the same table and to see the content of the table you can directly go with browse data part if you want the structure you can go with the structure part it's here data part is here program part was here and the sqlite commands was here right so let's go with the data part and let's pick our my user table and here you can see the data or you can see the value inside this table was stored in your plain text which is not a good way to store the sensitive information like your usernames and passwords or like your session ids token api credential or your encryption keys as well instead of this plain text storage what you can do you can simply use a class which was used for your secure sqlite database this was your main weakness here like you are using your insecure database that's your fourth scenario have a good day and stay connected